In the past, we mostly relied on chemotherapy to treat lymphomas. Chemotherapy drugs were actually derived from mustard gas that was used in World War I and World War II. So it's obviously pretty noxious and it's nonspecific. Chemotherapy not only fights the lymphoma, but it also can have effects on normal tissues. What we would like to do is have something more specific. And since cells in lymphomas are cells of the immune system, we try and target them with immune therapies. And immune therapy is an umbrella term for lots of different approaches that are not chemotherapy, but take advantage of the body's immune system to attack the tumor. It may specifically bind, like a monoclonal antibody, to a cell, activate a number of processes that kill the cell, it may activate other cells of the immune system, so you get cells that are killing the lymphoma cells and other mechanisms uh, that are not related to just the big sledgehammer effect. In the past, we thought that higher doses of chemotherapy, higher doses, that's what we needed. Now we know that using immunologic approaches to the treatment of lymphoid malignancies is the way to go. They are better tolerated, they are specific for the disease, and they are associated in some instances with a better outcome than with standard chemotherapy. So you can have proteins that are stimulated by the immune system, cells that are stimulated by the immune system, all of which work on the cancer cell specifically to kill it and to create a response in the patient, prolonged time to progression and hopefully improve survival. Immune therapies are administered in a number of ways. There are some which are intravenous, like monoclonal antibodies. There are some which uh, are oral. And there are others in which you are giving uh, what's called cellular therapy, like CART-19 therapy, where you take the patient's own lymphocytes out, T cells, and you manipulate them so that they are specific for a protein on the lymphoma cells. You re-inject them into the patient where they go around wherever those lymphoma cells are and kill them. So it's called cellular therapy. You have protein therapy, uh, you have cellular therapy, uh, and there, there's all sorts of other ones that affect the environment in which the cells live. There are proteins in the environment that keep the cells alive. We can block the, the effect of those protein with immunological drugs. Lots of different ways that we can affect the proteins in the blood, the cells in the blood, and the environment in which the lymphoma cells live, all through non-chemotherapy measures, measures that influence the body's immune system. Uh, we are using immune therapies to treat virtually every kind of lymphoma. Uh, we have, for example, rituximab and obinutuzumab, which are very effective for B-cell lymphomas, and there are some new antibodies which are in development for T-cell lymphomas. They are a very important part of the treatment, and in fact, it wasn't until we had drugs like rituximab that we were able to really improve the rate of cure of many kinds of lymphoma, or at least improving the outcome of our patients. There are a number of immune therapies approved for the treatment of lymphoma. Certainly, the anti-CD20 monoclonal antibodies, the antibodies that target that CD20 protein on the lymphoma cells, such as rituximab, obinutuzumab, and ofatumumab, are all approved. We have drugs that target the pathways in the lymphocytes, and you can consider that a form of immune therapy, such as abrutinib and idelalisib. And we have drugs that affect the microenvironment in which the cells live, such as lenalidomide, and what are called the checkpoint inhibitors, those drugs that stimulate the body's own immune system. They're approved for a, a few solid tumors, lung cancers, melanoma, kidney cancers, et cetera, not yet approved for lymphoid malignancies, although one in particular, nivolumab, is extremely effective for Hodgkin's lymphoma. And there are other types of immune therapies. They're what are called antibody drug conjugates, in which you take one of these monoclonal antibodies and you bind it to a poison. If you injected that poison into a patient, end of patient. 
but in this case, the antibody binds to the lymphoma cell, is taken up into the lymphoma cell, and it's not until that point in time that the poison is released into the lymphoma cell and kills the cell. A good example is a drug called Brentuximab Vidotin, or Adcetris, which is an extremely effective drug for patients with Hodgkin's lymphoma and some forms of T-cell lymphoma. This drug in patients who have progressed after chemotherapy and a stem cell transplant gets responses in almost 80%. And it's now being moved up to frontline therapy, displacing some of the chemotherapy drugs, moving more towards a non-chemo approach, or at least a less chemo approach, to the treatment of a variety of forms of lymphoma. Every drug we give to our patients has some potential risk. They have some side effects. And it differs with the drugs. For example, monoclonal antibodies have infusion reactions. While it's dripping in, you may get fevers, chills, uh, lowering your blood pressure, back pain. Other drugs may give you neuropathy or numbness and tingling your fingers, your toes. Some give you nausea, some give you diarrhea. So just because they're pills and just because they're biological or immunological therapies doesn't mean they are without their side effects. So they have to be administered by someone who has, a physician, who has experience in the administration of these drugs so they can be delivered as safely and effectively as possible. As we are using more and more drugs that affect the immune system, we're seeing some unique toxicities. One of particular interest is what's called a flare reaction. And there are drugs that when you administer them to the patient, such as lenalidomide and checkpoint inhibitors, nivolumab, pembrolizumab, pitalizumab, and all those other drugs, in a week or two, sometimes a little longer, all of a sudden, the lymph nodes can get bigger. The lymphocytes in the blood can increase in numbers and a number of other phenomena can occur that raises concerns in the patient and in the doctor that, oh my God, my disease is progressing. And you watch the patient for a week or two and all of a sudden things start shrinking again. And if you biopsy a lymph node of a patient who's undergoing this flare reaction, you can see that it's infiltrated by inflammatory cells cells that are part of the immune system that are probably in there trying to kill the lymphoma cells. Immune therapies are used not only as single agents but in combinations. Rituximab was first used as a single agent, but since it has modest activity as a single agent, it's been combined with other drugs. For example, in lymphoma, rituximab and lenalidomide is a regimen we developed about a decade ago called R-squared, and in untreated follicular lymphoma, whereas each drug has a response rate of around 30, 40%, put them together, the response rate is over 90%, including the majority of patients having complete disappearance of their disease. I'm sure that they're not cured, but it's as good as any chemotherapy regimen that we've got. I think that the future is biological, immunological therapy. Chemotherapy will disappear in our lifetime. We will be replacing these nonspecific toxic drugs with combinations of biological agents. But we have many of these agents currently available. And the question is, which drug to give to which patient, which combination in which disease and in which patient with that disease, and to try and study all the combinations and permutations could take virtually forever. What we need to do is to identify what are called biomarkers. The feature in that particular patient that's going to make him or her respond to that drug but not that drug or vice versa, or is going to respond to this combination better than that combination, which will lead us to personalized medicine. And through personalized medicine, we will be able to contain costs better, we will have better outcome, and we will have lower toxicity. And Eventually, as I said, chemotherapy will be a word that in five or 10 years, people will say, you really did that to patients? Now we give them a bunch of pills and we get better results. 
and that's where we are headed. But to do this, we need to do clinical trials to study how the drugs work and to identify which patients respond to various single drugs or combinations of these drugs so they can have the best impact on our patients.